Um, I'm Calvin. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I have the privilege of doing the closing remarks, but I also know it's very challenging because it has been a long day. It is five o'clock. It is a Friday. And I see a lot of young people, or basically you're Hong Kong people, so you have think places to get to. So I'll try to make this short and hopefully relevant because I know there are um, academics in the room, there's foundations, there's charities, there's social entrepreneurs, and there's students. And I have to make something, or I have to say something that is relevant to all of you, which hopefully I can do. Um, so um, this is, I like to have a fun and have a joke. Um, the first thing about this is that's supposed to be a joke. It's not like a wrong slide. So if you type in SDG, um, this is what actually shows up sometimes. So it means, it means that we have to be sometimes careful about using acronyms, right? Because um, I, I work with some bankers and government people and they just throw out acronyms. I'm like, what does this mean? So actually, we also all know this is sustainable development goals. Is there a little bit of echo here? Echo? No? All right. Okay, maybe I can just hear it. So, I'm just going to talk a little bit um, just as closing remarks, and we're going to have some time for questions at the end, right? Is that cool? Sound good? And then we're off to wherever we need to be for Friday night, okay? So, um, I want to talk about myself first, okay? So, myself, um, if you pull up my CV or I send you my CV, this is what it will look like. Everybody has their CV. You have your education, your career. Um, some of it has your family. Um, I counted um, how many bikes I've had in the last 18 years. Um, my bicycles are also part of my family. Um, I only have one wife, I have one baby, but in my history, I have had 19 bi bicycles, okay? They're not all in my garage. We don't have garages in Hong Kong. Um, anyways, and then other things that are apparently imp important. But I want to use a different way to describe myself, and I'm sure you, yourself, when you have your CV, your CV is just not, that's, that's not how you identify yourself, right? And the framework I'm going to use is from this a very famous book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Who's heard of it? All right, hands down. Who's read it? Okay, so maybe less people. But if you haven't read it, it's a very old book. My father gave it to me when I was like 12, and it's like, read this book. It's like, um, I don't know those words. Um, but I read it afterwards, and it is a very useful book. And one of the key things there is that through life, um, we have people with more, ex not older people, more experienced people, and people who are very young, students here, right? And we move through three stages in life. Three stages, one is dependence, independence, and interdependence, and I'll talk about this as a framework for the rest of today's talk. So that was me. All right, so that was my age of dependence, um, where I think I was at the age where I could change my, I, I didn't need diapers then, but you know, still dependent on my parents, right? And some of us here are still dependent on our parents. Um, that was also, a, part, a large part of this talk is about cycling, because I like cycling. Um, and Part of that dependence is also, you know, just depending on parents and stuff. But you start in independence, you start finding out your own limits. They say, you know, for me, it was in my 20s where I started cycling. And of course, this was a lot younger. So in my 20s, I did, uh, actually, when I was 18, I did a very stupid thing, which was um, ride from Vancouver to Toronto with these guys on a bicycle. And that's when you, you know, if you are the young people in this room, that's where you start creating your own independence, your own confidence, your own self-identity beyond what your parents have given you. Um, of course, there were very fun things in that experience, like we had a car with us and it went into a ditch, so we had to find a way to get that out. And so I'm already moving into independence, and then of course, the third part is about interdependence. And what does inter interdependence mean? It basically means that if you want to get far in life, you have to work together. If you want to get anywhere in life pretty successfully, you need to work together. And I think um, before we had um, all the great speakers from uh, Teens Futures, from Outblaze, from HK uh, Telecom, all of these guys, they were working together. All right, so um, in my 
when I was about 23, I graduated from my master's in international development from SOAS, which Alex is also alumni of, right? So um, I started working at a social enterprise called My Bank. That was in 2006, like, six, seven, and My Bank is a company that teaches financial literacy to young people. What does financial literacy mean? It means that actually a lot of people don't know about interest rates and a lot of people get, um, in their period of dependence, get a lot of things paid for by their parents, right? Who still gets their credit card paid off by their parents? No, no, nobody will. I've, I've tried this many times. Nobody raises their, you know, <laughs> nobody raises up their hands. So. Um, that's Lily, the founder. Uh, that was about two, three months ago. I was in the United States and I caught up with her um, in Los Angeles. Uh, she's got two kids now. So, you know, friends for a long time. And that really ex ignited my career or my passion in helping other people, but using different formats. Uh, very quickly, through the mentorship of Lily, my bank, and the people over there, I started my own social enterprise. This was in 2008 called Food Cycle. And what we very easily did, uh, this was back in London, um, and this is where I learned about going far, going, uh, being successful, is about interdependence. It's about working together. So basically, we worked with supermarkets, we worked with community organizations, and we worked with a lot of volunteers. We only had like two or three staff, but what we were able to do, and now I think they're at eight staff, but we have 2,000 volunteers now, 2018, 2,000 volunteers, 40 locations in, uh, in England, working with almost all the supermarkets, collecting surplus food, so food that's about to be thrown away, but it's still good, bringing it to a kitchen and then cooking it for people in need in uh, not like a soup kitchen manner, but in a very celebration manner. So think, you know, look at this, right? So think like Jamie Oliver, or think, um, you know, Yes, Jamie Oliver, three course meal. And this is about everybody working together. So these are all of the people um, from all 40 locations across the UK coming together. Uh, this is, um, I'll give a shout out to the law firm Hogan Lovells, which we worked with to get all the free space in regards to getting the training. So everybody comes together. You know, great things are done when we work together. And then of course, um, but that was in London. So when did I come back here? I actually came back here in 20, uh, 2013. Uh, I worked at the Good Lab. I also started a foundation called Unlimited, which was based on the UK model. Won't get too much into that. Uh, I came back here and I worked at the Good Lab. If you haven't heard of the Good Lab, what we do is we do collaboration. Uh, why do we need a lot more collaboration? Is because things aren't working too well. You know, the process in which we do things are, is not working out. So you might see people um, in government or on the streets yelling at each other. Why do they yell at each other? It's because the ways we communicate with each other are not as good as, as you used to be. The old ways are not working anymore. So what we do at the Good Lab is basically through um, a word, a, a very buzzy word called design thinking and human-centric design, we work with the government to bring citizens together to create better services and products from the government to its citizens. I only have half an hour or less than that now, so I won't get into too much. So basically, how we position ourselves as the Good Lab is coming in between citizens and other NGOs and the government to create better services. We don't get involved in politics, but we basically create better services for the people using your perspective. So as a student, as a mom, as um, anybody else. So we are um, very excited. Uh, I need to update you on that, Elsie. Uh, last Monday, we had a large contract through with um, LCSD Hohmanju. Uh, and then basically, we're gonna be redesigning one of their flagship systems using the design thinking process. So we got that. So that's gonna be very fun. And so that's my evolving journey um, of my life purpose. I'm always trying to get people to work together. Um, I'm not the, I don't think I'm the entrepreneur. I really see myself as a facilitator of people, different people, bring different people together. And there's, there's actually a job doing that. That's my job. I, bring, I try to bring people together, not in the yelling way, in the fun way. Okay, and when you have that, people work together. So um, I have been working for, 12 years now, I think. 
And this is just some things, knowing that there's a lot of people in the room, so hopefully everybody has a little bit of takeaway, is a couple things um, that you can take away for this Friday before you, know, you go off and um, try to remember like one thing um, you know, for the weekend or something, because you, know, you heard a lot of things. So the takeaways, uh, my challenge is to combine sustainable development goals, social innovation, and collaboration, and somehow your future, the future being students all the way to other people in this room. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. So, sounds, sounds good, all right. So, especially for the students in the room, or anybody else, sometimes we really focus on our future, right? And our future is things to get. So if you haven't graduated yet, of course, it's getting a degree. It's getting certificates for things you've done to put on your CV. You want recognition, and after you get up, sorry, you want a job. You want a good job, you want a career, and of course you want a good salary. But I really want us to just put a question mark around that. It's like, is that the priority? Is that what we all should go for as the main thing in life? Um, so it's just food for thought. There's no right or wrong answer. This is just my views. Um, instead of these things, I want you to think about other things perhaps to focus on. One is skills, so soft skills. Um, how to relate to each other. It's not just about staring at a book in the library the whole day, all right? It's about communication. So you know, if you need to stand up here, um, you, this requires communication. But a very fun thing is that how I developed my public speaking skill was not about standing in front of here, because it's a chicken and egg thing, right? You don't stand in front of here unless you have public speaking skills. So how did I get it? I worked in a bicycle shop for three years. I sold expensive bicycles to people who didn't want expensive bicycles. So I was a salesperson. I'm also an indoor spinning instructor at a gym for the past 14 years. All right, so I basically yell at people for a living. Uh, that was my first real job. But in a motivating way, in an inspiring way, in a way that I'm pretty comfortable in front of a crowd. But that's something that is very hard to learn and it just so happens, I didn't know I was gonna learn these skills that was required to be an entrepreneur, but that's how I learned it, okay? So these are very important skills for the future. A lot of things can be replaced by AI or computers, but public speaking is not gonna be one of them. So that's a skill to learn. Um, skills that are not seen as skills yet. You know, we had um, you know, outlays and you know, other tech firms, FinTech. You know, like 10 years ago, if you said like you're a KOL, nobody knows what a KOL is. Or that if you said that, you know, whatever that uh, super sales day on T-Mall or something is coming up, that 11-11. If you said a KOL can influence the sales of cars in China, like that's just not possible. Yeah, they're like, you're crazy, right? Like these are skills that are yet to be learned. And the only way to learn them is in the field, right? It's not gonna be in the book. Once it's in a book, it's already out of date. Um, and the last one is weird. Um, find a sport to play with others. What's, what's the? I like that. Oh, okay, I thought you was like, I have to speak louder or something. <laughs> okay, it's like, oh crap, what's going on? Okay, um, I'm a cyclist. I've been cycling for 18 years. Um, you meet very interesting people in the cycling circuit. Um, I have met um, the managing director of the investment firm for the hedge fund that runs, uh, that owns Fitness First which is a chain all around the world. Uh, two weeks ago, there was a very influential person from Russia flying in for a cycling thing here uh, on his private jet. I'm a friends with him from London. But these are friends for, like, I would never meet these people. But we see each other as equals because we like bicycles. Imagine trying to meet, like, a Russian oligarch who owns box seats at Arsenal. Like you would never, like I would never, I would be really weird, but we ride together, we rode together in London, all right? It's the only place for me where people from different social economic groups can hang out together and see each other as equals and develop fr friendships. Don't think of sport as just a sport. Sport is a great way of networking and learning new things. I have mentors who are cyclists. They're like, um, oh, this is a funny story. It's like, Calvin, don't get a tattoo. So I'm like, okay, I will listen to him, okay? I actually wanted to get a tattoo once upon a time. Um, the other thing is 
Focus on building relationships, okay? What are relationships? Friends that can share your values, who can walk up us alongside you. If you want to do a startup, if a bunch of your friends are in like really um, mainstream jobs like banking or law firms, you're going to be, they're not going to understand you and you're just not going to be motivated. You're going to actually be depressed because it's like none of my friends understand me. Find a bunch of crazy entrepreneur friends and then you can all be crazy together, all right? Like people who don't understand you will just pull you down. Find a bunch of crazy people and then you guys can be crazy together, okay? So that's very important. And then mentors, if you don't have a mentor yet, I highly recommend you have people about 15 years older than you to find as a friend to hang out with and they can give you advice. And if you're older, um, find somebody, somebody to mentor, okay? So I'm mentoring a couple of kids, right, uh, young people right now in their 20s. Um, because I think that's important as well. And then you can also keep up to date with what's going on, right? Um, because I'm really out of it in some other ways. Um, couple last things, life purpose. Um, it's not about you guys. It's not about you. Life, the world was not created for you, all right? Despite what everything in society says, it's not about you. It's about finding a so huge social problem and finding a way to solve it. Um, that's how you future-proof yourself, right? A lot of people say, oh, I'm worried about my career, I'm worrying about job. You know what? I think um, today, especially with the SDGs, you have seen and you now know there's some big problems in the world. If you focus your learning, if you focus your education, if you focus all of your things around solving a problem, you'll never be out of a job. Does that make sense? Right? If you're like, I want to get into banking. Um, I don't know if there's any bankers in here, but like, and I'm not a banker, but I'm pretty sure banking, um, the Citibank people, like Citibank people, like Citibank's still gonna be around. You're gonna be making money, but I'm pretty sure a lot of that is gonna be automated. It's not gonna need more people. It's probably gonna need less. All right, so look at, and, and lawyers, if there's any lawyers in the room, it's, you know, just look at how much AI is gonna replace the law, law business in a while, right? So you need to look for the future, and I say, when there's climate change, when there's illiteracy, where there's water sanitation problems. You know, these are the future. This is your future. So SDGs is not just about doing good things. It actually could be your future career, okay? So, you know, it's not about, like, doing good for your heart. It's actually very good for your bank account and your future. And you know, I guess, in a way, I, that's what I've made my life based on. It's about providing, like, solutions to people. And, you know, I make a living from this. Um, this is still like very high up in the air, so let me give you a couple examples of what is doing good is very good business, okay? Or very good for your future. Um, what is this? Um, people who went to the Tom Kelly IDEO Unleash thing will know, which is probably only LC. So, what is this? Can anybody guess? Is this an IoT thing? I will stand here until somebody tells me what this is and this person cannot be Elsie. Medicine? Medicine dispenser? Yeah, so it's a medicine dispenser. It's called Pill Pack. This is now in the United States. This is how a lot of people in the United States get their medicine. And if anybody here is taking care of elderly parents or grandparents, you will know they have lots of pills to take. And it's very hard to put all those pills into those little boxes for your mother to take. And you can't do that every week because it takes a lot of time, okay? And you don't wanna be just putting pills in boxes when you hang out with your mom or your grandma, okay? So basically, Pill Pack was developed using design thinking, ex-IDEO guy. Um, it basically allows you to take medicine and get prescription medicine in a very uh, different way. Wow, you know, that's pretty simple. It's pretty low tech. You know, how much money can that make? Um, how about $1 billion? It was sold to Amazon for a $1 billion within five years of them starting. All right? So pretty sure this is, you know, pretty big business. Okay, so don't think about this as you know, just doing good stuff for the UN. It's big business. Um, this, is, this is a drone. I, I'm aware of my time, so I'll just tell you the answer. So what is it dropping? 
a box, is it a bomb? Because drones drop bombs, right? What else can they drop? Pizza, tacos. This is blood. They're dropping blood, all right? This is called Zipline. It is a company that is working in collaboration with the Rwandan government to have transportation for blood because that's the one thing a lot of these clinics around the world lack. Very bad roads. I need blood, fresh, very fast, cold, and hopefully not, you know, turn bad. So they use drones to do this. They can drop it within the accuracy of a car parking lot. All right, so again, big business. And then the last thing, this is, um, I forgot the name of this plastic ocean guy. Anyways, this was like a teenager who created a new way of um, collecting plastic from the ocean. Because before this, there was only like only a couple of ways and it all used like a net. Like, let's be fishermen. So for thousands of years, it was just using a net and he created a new way of doing this, which used the ocean currents. So, you know, in closing, I, I want to say just um, STGs, you know, your future, this could be your future. This is the future we need to think about because this is going to be providing you the jobs of the future and hopefully, you know, changing the world as well. So that's me. Um, and then my closing slide is, you know, I know it's not over. You still have Saturday and Sunday. Um, after Saturday and Sunday, what is going to be your first step? All right. Is it going to be just the same old stuff? Let's venture into the unknown. Let's take a step into that future and go on an adventure because this is an adventure, right? This is the adventure of your life. So that's me. I have no idea how much time I have left, but if we do, let's have some questions. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Kelvin. Thank you so much for uh, you sharing those theories of life um, with us. Very sincere, very heartfelt. Yay. So we still have seven minutes. I know you're super popular, a very big influencer of the ecosystem here. So it's our luxury to have time to ask uh, questions. So while everyone is thinking, I'm going to take the advantage as an MC today. I'm going to ask you the first question. It's going to be very, very challenging. Um, so I know that you have a lot of experience working in social innovation. So how far do you think that we will um, reach the time that it's going to be a social norm? You know, like working in a social enterprise startup is going to be a normal thing. It's, a, it's this one of the social norm that you don't have to um, confront um, people around you to explain and everything. I think um, it's already becoming the norm. I think mo a lot of people know what like social impact and things like that is. Um, when I started in 2008, um, you know, my friend wouldn't um, at SOAS, uh, which is a university in London, uh, the professor wouldn't allow them to write um, a dissertation on social enterprise because it's like, that's too new. And we also went to a very left-wing school, so basically they, we didn't like business people. Um, so I think it's changing, but I think, you know, rather than, I'll flip the question around, rather than every young person becoming a social entrepreneur, I would say every government person, every corporate person, every anybody actually playing a role. It's not this is you and that is you. It's everybody playing a part in improving the community. Businesses, not, and we've witnessed that, you know, with Outblaze, it's like you can do both at the same time if there is the right, you know, value collaboration there. So I always say that Hong Kong doesn't need more social, full-time social entrepreneurs. It needs everybody. What's more valuable? I would take everybody doing 10 minutes of social impact stuff in Hong Kong than like, a hundred more social entrepreneurs any day, because that's how we change Hong Kong. Wow, thanks so much for the sharing. Any questions from the floor? I, I, I work in a bank, but I'm not a banker. Um, <laughs> so, so hopefully um, I still you know, get my job in 10 years time. <laughs> anyway, my question is, um, apparently you, you know, went overboard for, um, for studying, so I would assume that your family would be kind of well off, right? And, um, and usually when we, you know, um, look at social enterprises, NGO kind of stuff, it's not a very glamorous job. It's not something that makes you a billionaire, right? So how does your family look at you when you're now you're doing all this stuff? Did they say anything, hey, atai, atai, you better, you know, find a better job, you know, there's a family business waiting for you, or you, you know what I mean, right? So how do you convince them? 
that this is something you need to do, good to do? <laughs> it, for me, it hasn't been hard because my, my father, my parents, they were entrepreneurs and, you know, bless them, they were successful. So when I first started my own thing, you know, starting something up, they understood the value of that and they said, I think let's break it down. Um, for any young person to tell, like, um, there's a lot of nightmare things that as a parent you don't want your kid to say to you. And I think one of them is, Mom, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a startup person. So what the hell, what, what does that mean? Does that mean you're gonna be unemployed? Do I have to feed you? And do you, like, they might bake a yonga. You know, like all of that stuff. So I think, like, let's focus on that. And what I advise people on this path, like I've just graduated, I want to do a startup. You have to talk to them. You have to communicate with them. And tell them that in this one or two years, I will learn so much, and this is a fact, you will learn so much that you will jump levels if you go back into the mainstream. Because you'll learn so much stuff in a startup that would make you very valuable in HKT or whatever. You can actually jump several levels. You know, you can, instead of being assistant, now you can be a manager. And I've actually seen that. You know, people who had like, uh, like dabbled in startups now go into a mainstream, that's what they can do. And also the other thing is put a time to it, right? I'm experimenting, dad, I'm experimenting, my mom with startups, give me one year or two years. If I can't do this in two years, write a covenant. I will go find a job. And that, those two things seem to work out a little bit better instead of saying, I'm doing startup and there's nothing you can do about it. Because parents, you want the best for your children. All you're concerned about is that, so like son, like, I care about you, I just want to know that you know, you're well taken after and you've thought this through. So um, talk, communication I think is very important. Um, there's a lot of, I have, um, I'm mentoring uh, my nephew right now and he wants to do a startup and his, his father is in financial services and the father is like, son you should get a job in like you know, a bank and be like a bank teller and work, work your way up and I'm like don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> Like, it's like, it's like, what's your startup idol? Oh, that's a pretty good idea. I'm like, work two years, get some knowledge, and then, you know, launch your startup. That's gonna be a lot better chance than being a bank teller and working your way up because you think that's safe now. Like, say you get 22,000 a month. You think that's safe? That job um, will only be safe for the next couple of years. When you're 30, you're not gonna have a job because everybody is cashless and all your bank is on your phone, right? So there's not gonna be coins. You don't need to go to the teller. So it's complicated, but you know, hopefully yeah, that, that answers a bit of your question.